Let's now do some examples of Green's theorem. So our first example will be to calculate the integral around C with the positive orientation of minus x squared y dx plus xy squared dy, where C is the unit circle. So we'll do this two different ways. We'll do it directly, and then we'll do it by Green's theorem and check that we get the same answer. So how would we do a direct calculation? Well, we have to choose a parameterization of C. So we'll parameterize C. Um, so we're supposed to go in the positive orientation, so what does that mean? So it means that if we draw the unit circle like this, then we're going counterclockwise. So the domain that it bounds is the unit disk, and that needs to be on the left. Okay, so the most basic way to do this is the usual parameterization we use, where x equals cosine t, y equals sine t, and t goes from 0 to 2 pi. And this will be positively oriented because as t increases, the uh, polar coordinate theta is increasing or going around like that. Okay, so then the integral over c with this orientation of minus x squared y dx plus xy squared dy is the integral from 0 to 2 pi. And well, let me write out the whole thing. So I have minus x squared of t times y of t, and then the dx turns into an x prime of t. And then I have plus x of t, um, maybe I should call it, instead of writing this x squared of t, I write this x of t squared, okay. And then I have y of t squared, um, and then the dy becomes a y prime of t, and then I put in a dt, okay? Um, so x of t is cosine t, um, so um, I have minus cosine of t squared, but this, um, right, and y of t is sine t, and x prime of t is minus sine t, so we get a minus sine of t squared. So let's change that to a plus sine. So that's the first term. And then the second term, I have a cosine of t times sine squared of t. And y prime of t is cosine of t, so that gives me a cosine squared. So this is just 2 times the integral from 0 to 2 pi of cosine t squared sine of t squared dt. Now, let's remember some trade identities. So remember that sine of 2t equals 2 sine t cosine t. So this is actually, so if I square that, I get sine squared of 2t equals 4 sine squared t cosine squared t. And what I've got here is half of that. So this is 1 half the integral from 0 to 2 pi of sine squared of 2t dt. And then to evaluate this, we need the identity um, sine squared of 2t equals 1 minus um, cosine of 4t over 2. Okay, so then this becomes um, one fourth integral from zero to two pi of one minus cosine four t dt. So 
So when I integrate the 1, I'm going to get 2 pi divided by 4, which is pi over 2. And when I integrate cosine of 4t, I'm going to get sine of 4t times some constant evaluated at 2 pi and 0, and that's going to cancel out. So the answer I get is just pi over 2. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Now, it's going to be a little easier with Green's theorem, so let's see how that works. We'll do that on the next page. So I have the integral over c of minus x squared y plus xy squared, so at minus x squared y dx plus xy squared dy. Okay, so this x minus x squared y, this is p. This xy squared is q. So Green's theorem tells us that this is the double integral over the whole disk of dq dx minus dp dy dA. Now if I plug in the p and q I've got, this is the double integral over d of what? So dq dx, that's just y squared, minus, and what's dp dy? Well, it's minus x squared. Okay, so this is the double integral over d of x squared plus y squared dA. And now we can evaluate this using polar coordinates. So this is the integral as theta goes from 0 to 2 pi, and r goes from 0 to 1, and this is now r squared, and then we have an extra magnification factor of r, um, dr d theta. So when I evaluate this, this is the integral from 0 to 2 pi of r to the fourth over 4, evaluated at r equals 1 and r equals 0, uh, d theta. So this is the integral from 0 to 2 pi of 1 fourth d theta. And when I integrate over theta from 0 to 2 pi, I just multiply by 2 pi. So this is 2 pi over 4, which we could simplify to pi over 2. Is that what we got before? Yes, it is. So it worked. Okay. Now, in this case, it was you know about equally doable to evaluate the integral in either way. But in some other problems, one of these ways of evaluating the integral might be much easier than the other. So you can sometimes use Green's theorem to make a very difficult or impossible integral into an easier one. One more example of Green's theorem we should know. This is a very useful fact. So if um, C is a simple closed curve, and D is the region that it bounds, then we can get a nice formula for the area of D. So the area of D, well, there are three different ways we can write it. So um, it's the integral over C of, um, um, so I got to get the sine right, uh, x dy, and it's the integral over C of minus y dx, and you can also average these to write this as the integral over C of 1 half x dy minus y dx. So what's the proof? So let's look at the integral over C of x dy. So in this case, um, this is the integral of p dx plus q dy, where, where p equals 0 and q equals x. And so the integrand in Green's theorem is um, dq dx minus dp dy equals 1 minus 0 equals 1. Okay, so by Green's theorem, I 
I should write that in green, the green color. I didn't think of that. Okay, so by Green's theorem, this is the double integral over d of 1 dA, which, as we know, is the area of d. Um, and what about the other one? So that was the first equation. And the second one was I do the integral over c of minus y dx. Okay, so here, okay, now I'm going to use green like I was supposed to in the first place. So here p equals minus y and q equals 0. So um, dq dx minus dp dy equals 0 minus minus 1, which is 1. So this, by Green's theorem, equals, again, the double integral over d of 1 dA, which is the area of d. Okay. Um, and then this third, this third integral is equal to the area of d because it's just half of this plus half of that. So if you take half the area plus half the area, you get the whole area. So for example, we could just check this um, with the area of the unit circle. So let's see be the unit circle. Then we're supposed to get that the area of C is the integral around C with the positive orientation of 1 half of x dy minus y dx. Let's, let's evaluate this line integral directly. So we need a parameterization of the circle with positive orientation. I use the same one as before. So x equals cosine t, y equals sine t, and t goes from 0 to 2 pi. So then, by definition, this is the integral from 0 to 2 pi of 1 half of x of t, y prime of t, so the y prime is from the dy, minus y of t, and then the dx turns into an x prime of t, dt. So I plug in x equals cosine t and y equals sine t. I get 1 half integral from 0 to 2 pi of cosine t um, times, and then y prime is another cosine t, minus, and now y is sine t, and x prime is minus cosine t, excuse me, uh, minus sine t. dt. So this is one half integral from zero to two pi of cosine squared t plus sine squared t dt, which is one half the integral from zero to two pi of one dt. So that's one half times two pi which is pi, which is what we're supposed to get. Of course, we already knew that, but you could use this formula to calculate the areas of more complicated regions, and then it's somewhat more useful.